Viscous flows add an additional level of complexity to the analysis of fluid flows. Boundary layers are one of the most important aspects of viscous flows. In this lesson, we will derive a set of governing equations that describe the motion of boundary layers. Let's explore the theory of laminar boundary layers. The present analysis is for a 2D steady laminar flow and can be extended to three-dimensional cases and turbulent flows. Let's sketch out our flat plate and the laminar profile of the boundary layer forming on it. From the integral analysis that we discussed before, we found out that some terms are more significant than others for boundary layers. Let's take a look at this numerical result of a boundary layer over a flat plate to better connect what we found with the physical phenomena. The grey surface is a, the flat plate, while the yellow one represents the boundary layer edge. You can see how thin the boundary layer is compared to the flat plate. And note that shown here is just the tiny little portion of the plate we can deduce that the direction parallel to the plate has a larger order of magnitude compared to the normal direction. On top of that, we also see that the velocity parallel to the plate is much larger than the normal velocity. With these considerations and the outcome of the non-dimensional analysis performed before, we can say that the component of the velocity parallel to the plate and the x dimension are of the non-dimensional order of magnitude of 1, while the normal velocity and the y dimension are of the order of magnitude equal to 1 over the Reynolds number. With this in mind, we are going to see that for large Reynolds numbers, we can simplify the governing equations for the specific case of a thin boundary layer. Let's start deriving the laminar boundary layer equations. Let's recall here the continuity equation and the momentum equations in the x and y directions. We can recast these equations into their non-dimensional form substituting the variables with non-dimensional ones. The non-dimensional parameters are simply derived by dividing the dimensional variables by reference values such as length or velocity. In this specific case, we set the Y star and V star terms to be scaled by the Reynolds number. Substituting the non-dimensional variables into the governing equations, we can recast them in their non-dimensional form. Now, let's recall that a thin boundary layer exists if the Reynolds number is large. Under this assumption, we can neglect all the terms where the Reynolds number appears. This let us simplify the equations into this final form. As you can see here, the continuity equation does not change and the momentum equation along the y direction tells us that there is no pressure gradient along the direction normal to the wall. It is possible to find the laminar boundary layer equations expressed in different forms other than the one we presented here due to different choices for the non-dimensional quantities. Here, for example, you can see that if the variables are not scaled by the Reynolds number, we will obtain this final expression for the non-dimensional form of the governing equations. And this 
it will be their dimensional form presented here on the right. For simplicity, the third equation here is not presented since it always leads to the expression of zero pressure gradient along the whole normal direction. So we have derived the governing equations for the laminar boundary layer and we can now solve them to obtain the velocity profile and estimate the shear stress acting on the wall. For two-dimensional flow, the shear stress is expressed in this form. Based on the dimensional analysis performed before, we can neglect the derivative of the normal velocity and obtain the simplified expression that can be used to estimate the wall shear stress. As you can see from the sketch, the gradient of velocity is stronger near the wall and so the shear stress, while both reduce as we move towards the boundary layer edge. An interesting point to note here is that when the wall shear stress is zero, it can identify a possible point of flow separation from the body surface. So let's recap what we obtained from the analysis of the laminar boundary layer equations. First of all, the simplification do not affect the continuity equation. Second, the pressure varies only along the direction parallel to the wall. Hence, the pressure can be calculated through Bernoulli's equation from the outer flow. Third, with all the second x derivatives vanishing, the equations become parabolic and this can simplify their numerical solution. The set of equations we derived has some limitations due to the assumptions we made in the process of deriving them. The equations are valid for larger Reynolds numbers in the laminar regime. The solution can be obtained for any Reynolds number, but it is not valid when the boundary layer becomes turbulent. Also, the boundary layer theory is valid only for attached flows and cannot describe separation or even the flow past the separation point. We obtain the boundary layer equations and we can solve them to analyze viscous flow problems. This can be done first computing the pressure field around the body through any inviscid method, like the potential flow theory. This because the flow outside the boundary layer is assumed to be inviscid. Then the next step is to compute the viscous flow inside the boundary layer using the equations we just derived and imposing specific boundary conditions, such as the no-slip condition at the wall and the free stream condition at infinity.